Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, hello, everybody who's watching. Thank you for <laughs> tuning in to our creative conversation. Um, I am here with representatives Linda Featherston and Jerry Stodgedo, and we are going to be talking about music in schools, which March is actually Music in Schools Month. So we're going to be talking about um, music in, in education and why it's important um, and about an event that's going to be happening at the, the State House on March 18th. Um, so I will let them talk all about that. Um, so Linda and Jerry, thank you again for joining me. And we'll just start off with a kind of an easy question. Um, both of you, can you tell me about your professional backgrounds and also your creative backgrounds? Because I know you both do music and art. So Linda, do you want to get start and, and tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I represent the 16th district. So that's the area surrounding Johnson County Community College. And in my regular life, I am a piano teacher. I have a degree in music education from K-State, a degree in music history also from K-State, and I have taught piano for my entire working life. Very cool. Jerry, what about you? Can you tell us about your, your background? Yes, uh, when I'm not in the legislature, I have a real estate investment company and I also have a fine arts photography company. And uh, I represent the 21st district in the house and that runs from uh, state line to Metcalf and uh, 67th, 83rd street in Johnson County. Mostly Prairie Village, a little bit of uh, Overland Park, Leewood and Mission Hills. Yeah. Awesome. Um, what kind of photography do you do? Is it portraits? Fine or, arts. Just, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I sell my work online and in galleries. Okay, very yeah. cool. Awesome. Um, so that kind of brings me into my next question and both of you can answer again. Um, how did the arts affect your education or affect you growing up? Like, were you interested in the arts? That kind of thing. Linda, you can start again if you want. <laughs> okay, so um, from the moment I landed in public schools, I admired that music teacher and I wanted to play the piano just like her. And I begged my parents to start and Mrs. Danes from West Avondale Elementary in Topeka said you shouldn't start till second grade. So I started piano lessons in second grade. I started the flute through my public school in fourth grade and I played both of them all, both flute, piano, picked up the organ and piccolo along the way, um, played through college. And um, I have to say from day one, I wanted to be a piano teacher and, um, and that's what I did. But my experience in band, especially in high school was just so valuable to giving me the experience to meet all kinds of different people, work with all kinds of different people and to really have a family within my larger high school. Yeah, were you in the marching band in high school? I was, um, I played the piccolo in the marching band and then I was the drum major. And I will give a shout out to Topeka High School, Jerry and I's alma mater, which is just down the street here uh, from me at the Capitol. That's, um, that's where I was in band. Very cool, awesome. And Jerry, how about you? I had some teachers that had a real impact on me as far as art goes. Uh, when I was at Topeka High, a senior, I, uh, I really had not been involved much in, in arts and studied art or anything along that line. And I took a course in art history and uh, I found it absolutely fascinating, really developed an interest in me and in, in learning more about it and so on. And then when I got my first degree at K-State, it was in history. But I had a professor up there that was just absolutely the best teacher that I've ever had in my life. And uh, uh, I had him for uh, beginning English my freshman year. And uh, he also taught uh, uh, four courses in humanities. About it. So and he basically taught history, uh, uh, but used it in reference to art. And uh, ever since then, I don't see how you can teach history and ignore art as you're going through that history. And uh, I developed an interest in photography when I was in college, actually kept it up for uh, basically my whole lifetime. And about seven or eight years ago, I had some friends that said, hey, you know, that's not too bad. You want, you want to try to sell some of that stuff. And uh, so that's when I got uh, interested in maybe uh, 
doing sales and stuff like that. And that's worked out well so far, but uh, I have really have to thank those, uh, those two teachers for me. I took, uh, as I say, the arts history class at Topeka High and five classes from this guy at, uh, at Kansas State and they really had a big impact on my life. Yeah, that's great. Um, I just had a question and I lost it. Um, <laughs> Jerry, um, what you said you show in galleries. Um, what are some of the galleries that you show in? Just curious. Well, I've shown in, uh, in um, uh, several galleries here in, in Kansas City. Um, I've sent, been in shows here in Kansas City. Uh, I've sold my work in 17, 18 states now and uh, online. And uh, unfortunately, with the uh, duties in the legislature, it's kind of taken a back seat for the last uh, three or four years. But uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm missing it a lot. So I'm starting to ramp up again. And uh, hopefully, once the session's over, between sessions, I'm going to be able to uh, redo my website and do some other things and really get more involved again. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I know we talked about our experiences growing up, um, but just curious if we can get a little bit more specific. Is there one experience in particular or that you had or that you witnessed, anything like that, that really inspired you, um, you know, that was part of the arts, just specific instances? Yeah. Linda? <laughs> um, a particular instance, um, I will say, even though I'm not a band teacher today, my time in the Topeka High School band really made a big impact, as long as we're shouting out to our teacher, Steve Holloman, who's our band director there, and my classmate, Sal Cruz, is the drumline teacher there now, and um, when I was there my freshman year, was the first time any high school in Topeka had ever attended a bowl game with their band and it was like big news for the whole town. And now, you know, it's a tradition that the bands take, but it was, it was a real point of pride to be part of that band and part of that group, especially embarking on that one first trip. And then um, Topeka started the Sunflower Arts Festival while I was growing up here. And that was, you know, one of my bigger exposures to live classical music. And I would arrange my whole summer work schedule around so I could go each night and see live performances. And then of course now in Kansas City, I'm so lucky to have the Kansas City Symphony and they bring in amazing guest artists and the pianists they brought in. I will say the, the best, most inspiring thing I've ever seen with the symphony was when Yo Yo Ma came and played. And I have never heard anything more beautiful in my life. And as a piano teacher, I go to a lot of concerts, um, but to hear Yo-Yo Ma play the cello was amazing. So, Wow, that is an experience. <laughs> yeah, it, it was so, so good. And uh, you know, I'm not a clap between movement kind of symphony, yeah. player, but you couldn't not clap between the movements because it really was the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. Wow, that's amazing. Um, Jerry, did you, do you have any instances in particular that inspired you? Well, I really got interested in, in music uh, after I was, I was a naval officer right out of, uh, out of college. And once I finished that up, I moved to San Francisco. This was in the early 70s and uh, really kind of got into the, uh, into the music scene out there because the, the house bands in San Francisco at that time were the Grateful Dead, Santana, uh, Jefferson Airplane, those kinds, and uh, I, I just wish I would have kept some of the uh, some of the music uh, festival posters that were posted up on uh, telephone poles and stuff back then. But it was uh, it really exposed me to a lot of different kinds of music and so on. And I've really had a, a love of music ever since. I collect uh, music and and I collect uh, uh, old Sansui stereo systems. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, living out there at that time was was uh, tremendous. You you got up and close and personal to a lot of the the musicians with the national reputation that played in very small venues and stuff in San Francisco at that time. And that was uh, that was a great time to live out there. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, being surrounded by all that culture, <laughs> I think it's so yeah. cool. Um, I'm from Manhattan, which is you know, growing up 
it was a, kind of a smaller town. And so when I came to Kansas City, it was like, oh my gosh, big city, all this crazy stuff is happening, music's yeah. playing, art, all that. So I'm sure that's not comparable to San Francisco, but <laughs> close. Um, so let's talk about Music in Schools Month. Um, like I said before, March is Music in Schools Month. And um, how, I know Jerry, you and Representative Pam Curtis had a big part in planning this um, event on March 18th. How did that kind of come to be? What's the, what's the story? Why did you guys decide to do that? Well, Pam and I have been working on support for the creative arts industry for the last uh, three years. And um, in the last session, we got the, uh, the budget for the creative arts industry tripled. Mm -hmm. And it's still woefully short of where it should be. Uh, and uh, so I think we, and again, we got Linda very involved early on on this uh, uh, this year. And uh, she's been very gracious to uh, volunteer uh, uh, some of her professional expertise in, in our uh, uh, program that we're gonna have on the 18th. But uh, we're, we're really looking kind of forward to next year uh, when we can get people back in the building, hopefully, um, uh, like we have in the past. And we'd really like to uh, uh, try to get that as a year of the arts in the, in the legislature up there. And uh, I think this kind of kicks it off a little bit for this year, but hopefully we're shooting for next year where we could have a really comprehensive program that showcases the arts and the creative arts industry in Kansas and uh, on a regular basis up there. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I think it's kind of a, a, an exciting opportunity and uh, we're looking forward to working with, uh, with Linda and uh, three or four other people in the legislature that understand the, uh, not only the quality of life issues surrounding the creative arts industry, but the economic impact it has on the state of Kansas. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, Linda, what is your, um, what are you gonna be doing for the celebration? I know you have a role to play. Well, yes, I am, you know, contacting speakers and performers and I am gonna play the piano. I am fortunate enough that they're gonna tune the piano before the 18th, um, the legislative staff that's in charge of that happened to come down to my office and she was my parents' K-State football seatmate for many years. And she said, well, what do you need for this? I'm like, well, would you like to tune the piano? And she said, well, sure, we could do that. So, so I'm gonna play, I think uh, Representative Adam Thomas, who's also from Johnson County is going to play. He's gonna um, do some guitar playing for us. And then we're working on a couple others joining us that day. And um, it's just gonna be a great, a celebration of music. And we've been so lucky to have bipartisan support for this. And people are just really anxious to celebrate something. And, and it's great that it's gonna be the arts. Yeah. yeah. I think so too. <laughs> um, so this this event at the it's at the Capitol in Topeka. Um, it is not open to the public, correct? Right. Yeah. So yeah. it'll be it'll be um, legislate legislatives um, kind of celebrating together, coming together to celebrate the arts, which I think is really great. Um, yeah. And Jerry, like you said, hopefully next year, you know, yeah. we can pick it up and celebrate with everybody. Yeah. 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 And I'll, we'll have to research. Maybe that's something we can figure out how to record or live stream so the public can join us for that. Yeah. I think that'd be a great idea. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so that answered my next question of how are we celebrating? <laughs> um, so can you tell us, um, Linda, if you want to go first, why do you think music is important uh, to have as a part of education? I think music in the schools is a vital part of who we are as society. Music is a culture that we share across all genres of people and just areas of life. Um, again, through band at Topeka High, I met all kinds of people that weren't in my regular classes, but we were in band together. And I just got to know a lot of people whose lives were a lot different than mine. And so that was great. Um, Music classes, they create a safe space for kids. Our arts kids may not fit in every other little group, but they get arts and especially music in the school and they have somewhere to fit in. And then of course there's, you develop your musical chat, your talents. Um, 
you know, my own daughter went to K-State on a music scholarship. I went to K-State on a music scholarship. These are good things. And it's become a profession for both she and I, and my other daughter volunteers in music. I shouldn't leave her out. Um, in music and, you know, theater, we learned to work together in groups. We learned to problem solve. I think through the pandemic, we've really learned to problem solve. <laughs> how, how do we make our groups work when we may not be physically together or, or how far apart yet close can we be to work together? Um, but, and I think it's that sense of community that we can bring to a school, to a, a city. Um, I think that's what we get through the arts. Yeah. Jerry, do you have anything to add to that? Well, I think Linda really hit on it. Uh, it, uh, uh, it obviously has an impact on brain development uh, as you're going through uh, music education and so on like that. And the thing I like about it is that uh, my thought on education is that we need to develop well-rounded individuals. And uh, certainly the arts and music and uh, appreciation for those sorts of things uh, really develops uh, uh, a, an individual uh, more fully. So uh, I think that it's a, uh, uh, it's a wonderful program that we have in our schools. Unfortunately, it seems to be one of the first programs that are cut uh, anytime we want to cut back on education funding and so on like that. And I think that is a huge, huge mistake. So uh, uh, I would, I'm a big supporter of public education and a big supporter of music education as a part of that. Yeah, um, I was talking to Linda before we started, before we went live, um, the Arts Council is kind of wrapping up our 2021 Shooting Stars program, um, which for those of you that don't know, um, <laughs> it's for high school seniors in Johnson County. Um, they go to Johnson County schools, they get nominated by their teachers. Um, there's nine categories in the arts, music, theater, kind of encompassing everything. Um, and then they audition or they submit their portfolios and they have a chance to get scholarship money to go to the college of their choice um, in any degree field. So um, when I started working for the Arts Council back in March, which I was telling Linda was right before the shutdown, <laughs> um, it was, we were kind of right in the, the that end celebration part um, for the 2020 season. And so I got to see all of the hard work that the students did um, and how it paid off. And then just, you know, t getting in touch with them now and seeing where they are now, I think it's really great um, that they're still pursuing the arts in college and beyond. And um, so this might be the same question that I just asked, but <laughs> um, what do you feel that students gain for, particip in, for participating in the, in the arts and music? Linda, do you have anything? I think it's what Jerry touched on. It's creating that well-rounded citizen. Most of my piano students will not go on to be professional musicians, but they will go on to enjoy the arts, to be patrons of the symphony of the arts galleries. And, and I'll tell you, my greatest triumphs as a teacher in my studio are when my students go off to college and they're maybe not majoring in music and that's okay. But then I hear they've made a call home. Mom, can you send my piano books to school? Mom, could you buy me a keyboard for Christmas? Because they want something just for them and a space where they can express themselves and maybe deal with the stress of college. But that's when I feel as a private teacher, I have really done my job is that music has become a part of their life and then hopefully that's something they'll go on to share with others. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think just what Linda said, and then plus the fact, I think it, uh, it can really help build self-esteem mm -hmm. that uh, we've had art shows at the Capitol building that featured students. And actually uh, I have uh, been one of the judges in uh, art shows uh, for students in Shawnee Mission on uh, every now and then. And uh, when you see those kids bring in their work, I mean, they just beam. And when they get recognition for that work and so on like that, I mean, it just, it gives them a lot of self-confidence, I think. Yeah. And again, like Linda said, there's some kids that are involved with the arts that may not be, you know, mainstream type students, that sort of thing, but uh, it's where they shine. And uh, it's, a, it's an opportunity for them to uh, gain that self-esteem that they'll need as adults. And, and uh, 
I have seen that uh, on so many occasions. It's uh, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I agree. Um, well, that is all the questions I had prepared. <laughs> is there anything else um, that we didn't touch on or that you wanted to add um, about music in schools or anything like that that we haven't covered yet? Um, I will add, I'm starting to hear the first musings, musings of districts addressing financial difficulties for next year. And we're starting to already hear like we may need to cut specials. We may need to make changes for specials. So now is a great time to contact your legislator and remind them how important our Johnson County schools are to us and yep. how that helps further the arts in music. But now is the time for everybody to speak up for your schools because I just can't imagine what life would be like for so many kids if all of a sudden they lost all their music, art, theater, in the grade schools, in the other schools. I think that'd be a real loss for our kids and a hole that we will have a hard time filling in the future. I'll just put in a plug for the legislative process in general in, in Topeka based on uh, support for the creative arts industry. Uh, a lot of things in Topeka get done based strictly on, on dollars. And if you can't show that there's a dollar benefit to it, it's, it's, not, going to, uh, it's not going to happen. And I don't think they, they, a lot of legislators understand what a huge industry the creative arts industry is in the state of Kansas and how important it is to attracting businesses and individuals, not only to come into the state, but stay in the state. And uh, if you can think of Johnson County or the Kansas City Metro without museums and uh, art galleries and those sorts of things, we'd be a wasteland. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that uh, anytime uh, the people watching here who have an interest in art, uh, contact your legislators and let them know how important you think it is. And not only for just quality of life issues, but it's, it's important to business, it's important to economic development, it's important to keeping our kids here in Kansas, and it's, a, it's very important in attracting business to Kansas. Without it, uh, without those quality of life issues, uh, we're going to be in big trouble. Uh, economically. So uh, uh, it's anytime you can, you can do that. Uh, talk about supporting for the arts with your, with your legislators, do it. Yeah. You know, it's perfect that you guys said that because April, April 12th or 16th is actually um, Arts Advocacy Week for the United States. Um, so something that we're doing at the Arts Council is, well, I, I've been kind of doing it. <laughs> We're a two person team and Sarah's got a lot on her plate, but um, I've been looking into um, facts and figures and graphics and just a bunch of information about how the arts benefit education, economic development, the community, wellness, yeah. health, you know, well being and health, all of that. And um, we are actually going to be putting together a quick and easy guide to advocating for the arts. Um, which will live on our website. And um, it'll have downloadable graphics. It'll have resources, um, examples on what to say to your, legislat your legislative <laughs> representatives, mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. So I think I'm super excited to get started working on that. But April is Arts Advocacy Month. So yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Well, um, Thank you guys so much again for taking the time out of your afternoon to talk with me. Um, I've been checking our Facebook um, chat and comments and I don't, I don't see any questions. That is okay. Um, a lot of people will be able to watch this after the fact and learn some new information. So anything else before we sign off? Um, anything else to add? No. Nope. I'm good. All right. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks for having us. Really appreciate it. Yeah. yeah thank thank you. you so much. Yes, and good luck on the 18th. Um, I hope you guys figure out a way to live stream it. If you do, let us know, um, and we'll share yeah. it out. But yeah, with yeah, that, that would be great. Yeah, okay. I'll let you guys get back to your day. Thank All you. Right. Thank right. you. Take care. Thanks. Bye.